grateful for the invitation to be here at the first time of this, at this Ragtime meeting. And uh, I hope that after some discussions, uh, there will also some local uh, or also international collaboration come up. Um, because I'm situated not far from here in Wadsworth. And also in this is for doing work, and this is the plan. Thank you very much. Okay, so I would like to uh, entertain you with a little bit different subject now. I'm uh, going into uh, the subject of equation of state, and <coughs> in particular to the question whether the uh, famous or infamous deconfinement phase transition in superdense matter might occur in the interior of compact stars. And uh, in this talk, these uh, two uh, objects here, this uh, will be the superstars of my presentation, the very massive uh, pulsars of about two solar mass. And <coughs> a little bit of uh, prehistory of this fundamental question of uh, compact stars, uh, quark matter and compact stars. Yeah, okay, to just here you see uh, myself, some years ago, Armin Sedrakian, Norman Glendening, who is one of the pioneers of these investigations. We together have organized a workshop in Trento in the year 2000, and there's a nice uh, review book out of this, which is still very active, still very nice to get an introduction to the subject for those of you who are not very familiar with it. Yeah, so <coughs> if there would be quark matter and compact stars, this would be the proof uh, that deconfinement at high densities is possible at all. So <clears throat> this is not the trivial question. There are still many ideas that uh, actually confinement might prevail even at highest densities. So uh, as you know, we have on the one side, on the very fundamental level, a proof of the asymptotic freedom property of QCD. Uh, but we have not yet a proof of confinement. So, and as long as we don't fundamentally understand what confinement is, we can also hardly say anything about deconfinement. So this is a special feature of this uh, property. So, but nevertheless, <coughs> asymptotic freedom in QCD, happening at very high momentum transfers, uh, suggested the idea, and it was written down by Collins and Perry already one year later, uh, that in superdense matter, the Fermi momenta are uh, very high, asymptotically high, we should reach such a state with um, very small coupling constant. And then it seems to be natural that when the coupling goes to zero, then uh, also the matter shall be perturbative. So the constituents of QCD, quarks and gluons, shall become, uh, shall form an asymptotically free state of a quark gluon plasma pictured as a gas of free quarks and gluons. Yeah? But this is not the case because we have, at high densities, we have a high phase space occupation. And that counteracts the low uh, coupling. As you all might have heard about the Cooper theorem, uh, that at arbitrarily small coupling, but uh, high densities and low temperatures, which we have in compact stars, we, uh, condensation is unavoidable. So pairing of fermions, their condensation, and superconductivity, superfluidity phenomena. So this is what actually is also one of the exact limits of QCD at high density, a color superconducting state of quark matter. And so this is a little bit of the background of such a discussion. So the question is still very open and it is very controversial. It has been driven by observations and therefore might be very nice for uh, this workshop where we would like to organize the crosstalk between observers and theorists. Uh, so let me shortly only flash a few highlights. Uh, I start here rather late after this idea in 1988. There was a seemingly measurement of a sub-millisecond pulsar, which later turned out to be fake. But it was enough uh, to conjecture that at sub-millisecond uh, period, the rotating compact star must be very compact. Actually so compact that it must have a non-standard uh, equation of state. 
like uh, the one uh, which was conjectured for strange stars. So practically pure quark matter with uh, almost no or a tiny crust only. However, this uh, has, to, has been removed, this seeming measurement, and then the uh, situation was open again. <coughs> a few years later, then uh, with uh, the Ro um, ROSAT experiment, so ROSAT measured all sky, Röntgen, and found <coughs> this uh, lonely traveling um, neutron star, RXJ 1856 in short, uh, also called Trumper's star, and uh, they could measure then later also some uh, spectrum, so and from the parallax one could uh, estimate a radius which was as small as four kilometers. And so again, <coughs> we are with these very compact objects which can only consist of quark matter seemingly. So again, NASA announced in 2004 the discovery of strange stars. However, uh, after measuring then the optical part of the spectrum, one found that both do not match and uh, the resolution was then to correct the radius and now this star is maybe one of the biggest stars, if we can speak of radius measurements at all. And this is the whole uh, problem where there's a big appeal to observers and uh, clever astronomers. How can we measure the radii of compact stars, in particular of massive uh, pulsars? This would give a big impact to uh, the field of uh, uh, the fundamental equation of state of matter at high densities. Then, uh, okay, there was a bit later, was a measure, again seemingly a measurement of an iron line redshifted uh, by a set of uh, 0.35, which indicated also a very high mass star and uh, triggered a nature paper by Ferry Alösel, who claimed that, okay, with such a high mass, and no quark matter, no soft equations of state are possible. Uh, there was a reply to this by Mark Alford and a few other colleagues, including myself, where we demonstrated that the situation is not so easy. Even if we have uh, two solar mass uh, pulsars now observed, um, they may consist of quark matter. And this is what I will explain in my talk. Yeah, now we have these uh, two objects two pulsars which have uh, about two solar masses and this puts strong constraints to the equation of state. Uh, I will yeah, explain a bit in this talk a conjecture which is a bit fantastic, it's uh, of course a fairy tale, but if this fairy tale proves to be the truth, this would be a direct measurement that there could be quark matter in compact stars. Namely, if it turns out that these two pulsars, these two superstars, which I showed here on the previous slide, these artistic uh, pictures, if it turns out that they both have very different radii, significantly different radii, they have to very high accuracy the same mass, then the mass radius relationship for compact stars must be very non trivial and actually is a strong indication uh, for a phase transition, for a strong phase transition in a cold, dense uh, QCD matter. Yeah, this question of existence of a first order phase transition in compact star matter, so in the QCD phase diagram somewhere here at the bottom where we have temperature zero and baryon density and isospin density plane here lives the compact stars. If there a first order phase transition could be detected, could be measured in astrophysics, this would give strong support for one of the key questions in heavy ion collision experiments nowadays. There are billions of dollars spent to uh, find out what is the structure of this phase diagram. This is all artistic view. And uh, one of the conjectures is that there might be a critical point somewhere out here in the high density region of the phase diagram. At the moment, we have uh, good measurements only in this region, very close to the temperature axis, where also lattice QCD simulations, ab initio simulations of the QCD uh, partition function exist and indicate a crossover transition. So no first order here, crossover. And if down here would be first order, then somewhere must be an endpoint 
of the first order phase transitions. And this critical endpoint is what now new generations of heavy ion collision experiments are looking for. So, for instance, in Darmstadt, the FAIR project has one uh, experiment which is called compressed barium net or CBM. Uh, Nika and Dubna also wants to explore this region of the QCD phase diagram. <clears throat> so, we see that astrophysics can help the colleagues in the heavy ion community and uh, also fundamental physicists to solve an important question. There are a few other questions related to this topic, uh, namely the question of the hyperon puzzle. So, when in the equation of state we would allow for the occurrence of hyperons, then the, the equation of state becomes soft and uh, after solving the Tolmar-Volkov equation, we get a maximum mass, theoretically, which is way below the already measured two solar masses. So this is called the hyperon puzzle. Uh, there is uh, also a possible direct Oka problem. If the equation of state allows already at low densities a high proton fraction, which is related to a large, uh, stiff um, <coughs> symmetry energy of the matter, then the direct Oka process can be switched on and lead to a very fast cooling, maybe contradicting observations of the uh, bulk of uh, cooling data for compact stars. Finally, a QCD phase transition might help in exploding supernovas because of the uh, release of latent heat. So here, this, this is a few other uh, topics which are touched by uh, the contents of my talk. What I would like to argue is <coughs> a task for uh, the theorists. Theorists should explain what is hadronic matter doing at uh, very high densities. But very high densities, nucleons start overlapping and they feel the quark substructure. And um, there's no good and no precise calculations of such effects because here again everything is intertwined with the unsolved problem of how quarks are confined in the baryons. So we have no good understanding how the confining force behaves when we increase the density. There might be a self-amplification effect, so screening the potential might make the nucleons bigger, and when they are bigger, then they touch already at very small densities. This can trigger a very early phase transition. So there's one uh, route to solving the problem, which is accounting for the Pauli blocking on the quark level between nucleons. So first you can uh, then, uh, calculate like in the hydrogen molecule, yeah, you have, you share the orbitals, you share also the orbitals of the quarks between the baryons, and then there's a repulsive effect due to Pauli blocking between the nucleons. And this is what we are uh, currently reviving. These calculations have been made years ago, but in non-relativistic approaches where the quark mass is fixed, we know, however, we are quite sure that at high densities, the quark mass goes to zero in the chiral restoration transition. And then <coughs> the baryons might swell, they might become very big when they are formed of almost massless quarks instead of very massive quarks. So uh, this uh, stiffening of uh, the hadronic matter is very important. Also a stiffening of quark matter would be important because otherwise ferriol ösel would be right and uh, equation of state which allows a QCD phase transition to quark matter would then lead necessarily to a softening and then could not, such matter could not carry two solar masses. So there should be some effect, some interaction effect in dense quark matter which makes quark matter stiff enough to uh, carry two solar masses in a <coughs> calculation of compact star properties. There are <coughs> interesting ideas about multi-quark interactions. Again, this brings us to the badly understood uh, gluon sector of QCD at high density. So, uh, let us start from the systematic background and beginning. So, there's one uh, 
very clear strategy for us. We have a basis for discussing the equation of state in conjunction with measurements of compact star properties, mass and radius. We can calculate the sequences of uh, mass uh, radius once we are given the equation of state. We just plug it in to the tolman oppenheimer volkov equations and then from an equation of state, pressure over energy density, we get the mass radius curve, which uniquely characterizes then in its uh, shape what the equation of state looks like. So this relation can be inverted. So ideally, from uh, very good measurements, so here are some points in the mass radius plot measurements with some arrows. When these arrows get very small and we have many of these mass radius measurements, we might construct the right hand side and then invert and so in this way measure the cold neutron star matter equation of state. And <coughs> As long as uh, these measurements have errors, but there can be a statistics, we can apply Bayesian analysis to such measurements and then try to get an equation of state with a band of errors. And eventually, we can in this way also quantify the requirements to mass radius measurements in order to answer certain questions, like the question for a possible phase transition. So, is there something here like a plateau, a release of latent heat in a phase transition of first order. This is one of the key questions and for that we need mass radius measurements of high accuracy. What we have at the moment, I will, uh, I'm not an observer, so you might uh, criticize uh, here or give hints. So there's <coughs> one type of measurements um, which <coughs> is based on uh, the measure, measuring the luminosity of objects uh, for which we uh, know the distance either from parallax or that we know these objects are in globular clusters where we have uh, by astrometry we have some idea about the distance. And we have the spectrum and can therefore try to extract the temperature at our uh, observer point at infinity and uh, measure the photospheric radius of this emission of radiation, R infinity. R infinity shall then be corrected for general relativistic effects uh, in the, because the radiation comes from the vicinity of a curved space-time. So <coughs> it depends then on the mass. So there's a relationship which follows from this formula, uh, a constraint and the mass radius plot which gives these parabola shaped regions. And there are different analyses of this type. I mentioned already RxJ1856, Trimbas star, found in Mozart. <coughs> this object has a very large R infinity, so this black line here, actually it was discussed to be a lower limit on the mass radius plot. And then we have other objects here in globular clusters <coughs> where the R infinity is much smaller. So they, are, they have no overlap, these two constraints, which already points to a puzzle. So <coughs> probably it is uh, it's very probable that uh, X-ray sources might have inhomogeneous temperature distributions at the surface. Also, maybe we don't understand well enough X-ray bursts and other <coughs> the sources of these uh, X-ray radiations. So there's a lesson. The lesson has already been learned when analyzing RxJ1856. I mentioned this in my introduction. First, uh, from just measuring the high energy part, the X-ray spectrum from uh, <coughs> one uh, made a perfect black body fit and analyzed a radius of 4.4 kilometers. However, then also the low energy part here was measured as Hubble. Um, and uh, then these two parts of the spectra, both fitted with black body, could not match. They could make match if <coughs> we assume a radius of the total object here of 16.8 kilometers, uh, R infinity, and uh, the 
X-ray part of the spectrum coming from a bit hotter region. <coughs> okay. And this could be a very general feature of such uh, type of sources. With this caveat in mind, however, we can uh, proceed and find in the literature that um, a few years ago, Steiner, Lettemer, and Brown did make what we sketched in our introduction, this inversion of uh, the Tornorm per Volkov equation. So take these measurements for, even with big arrows, for mass radius, um, and um, then extract from them the most probable equation of state. So what has come out is such a region here of, uh, this is some uh, statistical weight, uh, some uh, region of probable mass radii of compact stars which would relate to this band in the pressure energy density for the equation of state. So that's already quite perfect. This is a quite, uh, quite precise measurement of the equation of state given very blurred data. However, here um, one has to be careful because these uh, parabola-shaped regions, which we analyze from the luminosity radius, they are very much degenerate with mass radius relations, which we will calculate for the APR standard equation of state, for instance. And so there is a strong bias towards this equation of state. And therefore, what we practically see here is the APR equation of state, which related to a mass radius relationship, which looks like a parabola. So one should to be uh, honest, one should look for mass radius constraints, which are rather uh, independent and um, which are more suitable for Bayesian analysis. I will discuss this in the following. This is another viewpoint, not the one of Steiner and Lettimer, uh, namely the one of Trümper. Trümper is very critical uh, concerning these um, parabola-shaped regions. So here we have, uh, from this is taken from a paper of his, uh, what he considers as uh, good constraints in the mass radius plane. Here are the two solar mass measurement, number one of Demorest et al. of the two solar mass pulsar. Some of the, uh, these uh, parabola shaped regions, in particular these uh, limits of uh, four here, Heinke et al. <coughs> and then uh, such a shape from uh, uh, QPOs in uh, low mass x ray binaries. And then we, he comes up with uh, this white region as the most probable region for uh, some compact stars here, some limit mass radius um, compact stars. There's <coughs> another type of measurement which is, uh, I think, very perspective for the future, given that SKA and other large-scale missions are on the horizon. Uh, Slavko Bogdanov has uh, published a paper, actually it's published in Astrophysical Journal, where he analyzes um, the uh, ti timing of um, thermal emission and uh, analyzes here, gives a fit of these measurements with two periodically varying sources, seemingly a north and a south pole type, a hotter region on a rotating star. And <coughs> from uh, an analysis, he obtains that at three sigma level, the radius should be larger than 11 kilometers. So here, this yellow band would correspond to a one sigma region and the blue band is the three sigma region of his analysis. And <coughs> we see lines of some uh, equations of state which we predict the corresponding mass radius relationships theoretically, different equations of state. We see there's a broad variation. Some of them are very stiff, they predict very large radii, others predict the very small radii. So the red ones are these uh, famous strange quark matter equations of state which predict very small radii. So really the question is, can we measure to higher accuracy the radius and uh, even better radius and mass of compact stars 
in order to discriminate between these uh, equations of state. As we have now measurements of two solar mass, so all these uh, equations of state which do not reach the two solar mass limit, they can be excluded. So, <coughs> Lettimer and Steiner uh, and Brown, they have a subsequent paper in their analysis. They go even so far to say that uh, models with a larger radii, let's say here 14 kilometers or above 14 kilometers, that they are ruled out. I think this is a too strong statement at the moment. Now let's come to the quark matter issue. Um, one and a half years ago, um, a paper appeared where this um, question of systematics of mass radius uh, relations uh, and equations of state has been taken up in the view of a possible phase transition. A very schematic uh, type of phase transition uh, of equation of state has been suggested, which is shown here in the upper right uh, plot, which has a blue band of a more or less well-known nuclear metal equation of state, and a suggested uh, behavior at uh, high pressures or high energy densities, uh, basically where pressure is proportional to energy density, and the proportionality constant is related to the squared the speed of sound in matter. So this uh, slope of P over epsilon determines the stiffness. We need very stiff quark matter, so we can dial here this speed of sound as one of the parameters of such a study. The other parameter is the onset of the phase tra transition, so the critical energy density or the critical pressure here. And then we vary the latent heat of the phase transition. So we have a model of an equation, generic equation of state with three parameters, the onset, the width of the transition, so the uh, latent heat, and the stiffness at high densities. And then we plug in such a model into the TOF equations, and what we get is, um, well, the blue band would be a pure hadronic star, and then <coughs> we switch on a phase transition here at a given uh, value of a critical, uh, we put the speed of sound to the maximum, of given by causality, and uh, now we dial this delta epsilon, so the latent heat. If the latent heat <coughs> in units of the critical energy density is rather small, let's say 30%, we have just a continuation of the hadronic branch of stars to hybrid branch, uh, with actually a lowering of the maximum mass. So nothing very spectacular. We can increase <coughs> the latent heat up to 60%, and at about 60% there happens the following, then this branch here uh, at the onset is horizontal, so just barely stable, and then we have here some stable hybrid star branch. If you increase further and make the latent heat very big, and therefore have a strong first order phase transition, an instability happens. So this uh, small dotted region here, there's no stable stars. So actually our mass radius uh, plot would have a discontinuity. We would have one family of hybrid stars, which is disconnected from the family of hadronic stars. And such a feature, once uh, mass radius measurements at high accuracy are possible, would be clearly distinguishable from all the other possibilities where we have just one continued family. So the occurrence of a separated third family with an almost horizontal branch here uh, of uh, almost the same masses and but different radii, this would be a, a strong indication of a strong QCD phase transition in the equation of state. So the task for the observers is to really measure um, very, with very good accuracy the radii and wishfully at high mass, at the highest possible mass. So imagine now that uh, this uh, so-called twin, that you have the same st different stars with the same mass, so mass twins with different internal structure, that they happen at two solar mass. 
And then imagine, ideally, that our two superstars, which we have here on the first slide, uh, that they would turn out to have those very different radii. Then we would have proved the existence of quark matter and uh, compact stars. Where do we stand now in the theory? So here <coughs> we have, um, with my postdoc, uh, David Alvarez, we have checked this conjecture a little bit. Uh, we took our famous, uh, uh, our favorite hadronic equation of state, a density dependent relativistic mean field, which is uh, constrained at the separation density and it was um, the properties of um, very <coughs> large nuclei. And we construct in a similar way such a phase transition which is a uh, very schematic uh, high density phase and we indeed obtain such a picture. So we show here that it's possible to have these twins also at two solar mass yeah, with different radii, let's say 13 and 11 kilometers. So if one could measure uh, the mass of these um, two solar mass pulsars at an accuracy of say 500 meters, then it would be possible to uh, distinguish whether they are they have a different interior or the same interior. So the internal structure of this hadronic branch and of the hybrid star branch is very different. So hadronic stars are very boring. They have a low central density, a bit larger radius, and uh, the hybrid star has a very exotic <coughs> extended uh, interior and then a hadronic shell. Okay. <coughs> so and the existence of um, such um, possibility is related then to a solution of, uh, of these problems here, which we have mentioned already. I would like to, to sketch this here. Uh, the left plot is uh, taken from a paper of um, Pavel Hensel and uh, Lejek Stunik, where they discuss the problems, uh, in particular the hyperon puzzle. So hyperon puzzle is, okay, <coughs> you have the given is the measurement of the two solar mass star. Then the normal nuclear matter equation of state would be the blue line. If you add hyperons with the onset here at this uh, about solar mass, then <coughs> equation of state becomes very soft and the maximum mass is actually below 1.4 solar masses. So, and this discrepancy is the hyperon puzzle. So these are very advanced uh, equations of state here. So Brückner hat Fock with realistic forces and all that stuff, but nevertheless it's a problem with the maximum mass. <coughs> then a solution of this puzzle was suggested. Uh, okay, let's assume we have the transition to quark matter even before the hyperons occur. And this quark matter might be stiff enough to carry two solar masses. Then we solve the hyperon puzzle in this way. However, then <coughs> we have a different problem which is called the, the reconfinement problem. Namely, the quark matter equation of state, or the hybrid equation of state with quark matter, and the hyperon uh, equation of state, they cross here. And at that point, nature should, in principle, uh, favor the equation of state with the higher pressure, but, uh, which is the hyperon one. But it does not. <coughs> Since uh, and then comes a heuristic assumption, that once you deconfine, you deconfine forever, and this second crossing should be ignored. But this is already blah blah, and okay, it shows that we have no good models for, and yet, for understanding the deconfinement transition. There's another <coughs> related problem. If the quark matter equation of state is really very stiff, we can have a phase transition here. And actually, the hybrid equation of state is indistinguishable from a nuclear matter equation of state. This is called the Maskerat problem. A uh, term was coined by Mark Alford and collaborators. So they found solutions that uh, a hybrid equation of state really gives about the same mass radius relationship, except for the very highest masses here. And then <coughs> we could have as precise measurements as they would be possible, but we can nevertheless not distinguish. Is uh, such a point here on the mass rate, but does it belong to a nuclear or a hybrid equation of state? So this would be a very bad situation. If hadronic matter, however, stiffens 
sufficiently at high densities, then the situation uh, occurs which solves all these problems. If with excluded volume approximation or with this Pauli blocking on the quark level, the nuclear equation of state becomes much stiffer, like this blue one here. Then <coughs> we can afford even a phase transition to hyperons, because also the hyperons should have an excluded volume effect, like here. So hyperon equations of state will then also be stiff enough, and even we can discuss hyperon and quark matter equations of state, and all in accordance with the two solar mass constraints. So really, a sufficient stiffening of hadronic matter, maybe due to the account of Pauli blocking, uh, makes theoretical approaches with phase transitions, be it to hyperons, be it to QCD matter, more consistent and uh, <coughs> in accordance with observational data. So here, of course, we can cross organize crosstalk with our colleagues from heavy ion collision. As an example, I uh, mentioned here my other affiliation in Dubna, uh, where the NICA is constructed. It's, it's the nucleotron-based ion collider facility. The nucleotron is a superconducting accelerator ring which already exists and which presently is um, modernized to uh, provide um, a high quality beam of heavy ions at um, about 5.5 GB per nucleon, which then should be filled into new collider rings. They are symbolized here in the logo of NICA with actually two interaction points. The second one is up here. And uh, then we can reach the most interesting region of the equation of state. Here's pressure over density. So uh, the NICA collider mode might reach here the highest densities of interest for hybrid equations of state. Already at the fixed target mode, which is accessible within a few years, um, we might test possible onsets here of a phase transition from hadronic phase, so this is here a red hadronic equation of state, to the quark matter. There are different possibilities of quark matter sketched here. Actually, the corresponding asymmetric version of this uh, symmetric equation of state has been put into uh, tonal Volkov equation. And then we get the corresponding, you know, the same colors and same line styles correspond to these mass radius plots. So actually, <coughs> you see also in these um, examples, um, high mass uh, stars with quark matter are possible. But <coughs> here we did not uh, yet entertain this idea of high mass twins, which I discussed today with you. Okay, so <coughs> this is another um, possibility within this equation of state, which I just showed you. There are two QCD effects, namely diquark condensation, so color superconductivity in high density quark matter, and a strong vector interaction, which leads to repulsion and stiffening of quark matter. And uh, these are the corresponding parameters. We see that this white band here in the middle, where stable hybrid stars are possible, if they should fulfill the constraints from the high mass pulsars, the red and blue bands, then we have certain constraints for, for the microscopic parameters of the quark matter equation of state. Thank you. Okay, <coughs> How, uh, where do we stand in modeling the um, excluded volume effect? So, very <coughs> standard is um, that you introduce um, finite eigenvolume of the hadrons, which actually can be chemical potential and temperature dependent. And then you introduce here shifted chemical potential. You can consistently calculate the equations of state. I show here the finite temperature version because finally you want to apply uh, the hybrid equation of state also to supernova modeling and to heavier ion collision modeling. So this we have done. And then on the quark matter side, uh, the nambu jonal lazino model has been discussed uh, very much uh, in recent times because it can address the chiral symmetry restoration, namely the occurrence of a dynamical quark mass, where here's the current mass, and there are contributions from quark condensates which modify the quark mass in dense matter and describe in particular how the quarks, uh, quark mass drops at high density. Here is a non-trivial interaction term, so the 
standard one is a four fermion interaction, L4, it's given here. And there's an eight fermion interaction term given here with a scalar and uh, vector self interactions. And uh, the corresponding scalar and vector mean field contributions, which randomize mass and chemical potential and an effective potential. And this is a thermodynamical potential, and this all has been put together. And <coughs> we obtain in this way a strong phase transition with, to stiff quark matter. Here we vary the different parameters in quark matter to show the variation. And what we obtain is the wanted mass radius relationship with um, onset of a phase transition, then an instability, and a stable branch of hybrid stars at high mass. So here we have uh, demonstrated that within microscopic approaches to the equation of state, this fantastic idea of high mass twins can be um, justified. Yeah, such studies are performed in the European um, uh, collaboration, which is uh, sponsored by COST. So here is a website who is interested in this now. 28 member countries uh, join in this uh, effort for new comp star. This is the name and this is the number here, MP1304. <coughs> okay, I will skip this part. And um, uh, how many minutes I have, Chairman? One? Uh, one or two. Okay, so then. Uh, let us, uh, if you want to ask, there's some discussion of, of radio. I want just to show an outlook, namely um, the Bayesian analysis of this. So we have varied systematically these um, equations of state and op op oops, obtained here a big bunch of mass radius relationships. So with color code is here the probability for a certain equation of state. This is an unphysical uh, Bayesian analysis because we have all the unstable configurations not excluded. If we exclude them, then what is left is uh, this plot here. So here we have the APR, hadronic equation of state, uh, and added an excluded volume to it. So then we can have a phase transition at high mass, and here we see a little twin uh, branch, which has the highest uh, statistical probability. Um, we have the alternative without the excluded volume. We have the phase transition doesn't reach the two solar masses and then such a uh, mass radius diagram without discontinuity would be the most favored one. But the absolute um, probabilities are rather lowish. So now this is uh, my uh, master student who will defend his thesis in two days from now. He has put this in his the thesis here. Let us make time travel and assume that exact radius measurements are possible. And it comes out that the two solar mass stars, these two superstars, that they have indeed different radii of 13 and 11 kilometers with corresponding arrows. So what would that imply? So it would then look like this. So we would have these additional observational constraints for Bayesian analysis. And if we perform the analysis then, then we, for instance, <coughs> could come up here with the highest probability of really one uh, very strongly reduced from this total probability in the parameter space to this one most probable configuration of a hybrid star, which is here the black line with the strong position. <coughs> so this is what sh should be done then to really measure quark matter in compact stars, measure the radii of uh, high mass stars and find out that there are two different possibilities. Okay, finally one can go to finite temperatures, study black hole evolution and measure the whole phase diagram including temperature and in this way make contact with our heavy ion collision colleagues and so this is my summary. Thank you very much for the attention.